There goes the Elmire Express to the 20, to the 10, touchdown. Morning staff and students, have you ever heard of the Elmira Express? I didn't think so. It was Ernest R. Davis, one of the greatest football players you've never heard of. Ernie Davis was the first African-American man to win the Heisman Trophy. It is awarded to the best college football player in the USA. He was also the first black athlete to come first overall in the NFL draft. Ernie never knew his father. His father died shortly after Ernie was born. Ernie then went to live with his grandparents in Pennsylvania at age 14 months. Ernie had a stuttering problem as a boy and was made fun of for it. Ernie's mother remarried when Ernie was 12 in Elmira, New York, so then Ernie went to live with her in Elmira. Now that you know a little bit about Ernie, I think I should tell the rest of his story from his perspective. Walking out of the tunnel felt great but terrible at the same time. I felt like I had a million eyes all on me, everyone just looking for me to screw up. Davis, keep your head down. We don't want you hurt. That was my coach, Ben Schwartzwalder. He wanted me to keep my head down because, whoa, because that. People throw empty beer bottles and popcorn bags at me just because I'm a different skin color. Do you imagine being ignored or made fun of just because of your skin color? Not being able to sit at the front of the bus just because of your skin color? That's the way it was in the late 1950s and early 1960s in the USA. Racism was still very much a part of life. On another note, I'm so glad I got a scholarship to Syracuse University. The only care that I could play football and play it well. My idol, Jim Brown, went to Syracuse. He was also black. In Wild Syracuse, my coach, Ben Schwartzwalder, let me wear number 44, Jim's number. My coach is very stern and serious about football, but it's nice to know he actually cares about me. I remember when we went to the 1960 Cotton Bowl. But they didn't even let me stay in the same hotel as my teammates. Stuff like that makes me really angry. But my teammates said that they wouldn't stay in that hotel if I couldn't. I liked their support. I remember the game for the 1960 Cotton Bowl. I took a lot of cheap shots that game. The white players were out to get me. I'm sure of it. But in the end, we won it. One of my greatest accomplishments, winning the Cotton Bowl. Another one of my greatest accomplishments is winning the Heisman Trophy, but more importantly, being the first African-American man to win the Heisman Trophy. I felt so happy when the announcer said, And the winner is Ernest R. Davis. After that, I even got to meet the President of the United States, John F. Kennedy. After that, in, le- in the spring of 1963, I was drafted to the Cleveland Browns, and that was awesome because Jim Brown was on the Cleveland Browns. I get to play alongside my idol. But after I was drafted, I was beginning to feel a little bit sick and was getting some nosebleeds, so I went to get checked out, and I was diagnosed with leukemia. My coaches said I'd have to rest, maybe for the whole season. My doctors told me I was responding well to my treatment, but I'd probably never going to play a game of football again. The series was devastating. Even though the Browns let me suit up and go on the field once before a game, I never actually played. They had no cure for leukemia back then, and I died. Age 24, May 18th, 1963. But even though I died so soon, I feel as though I lived a full life. I took advantages of the opportunities I had, despite the obstacles that stood in my way. Since I'm no longer here, the best I can offer for you is to watch The Express, my life story on DVD. I hope it inspires you.